Hi guys, welcome to a new video. A few weeks back, I was asked to do a little presentation on how our guns have developed over the years. The best is to go right back to the beginning when I first started. I have talked about this in the past. Basically, I ended up in an area where only game fish were allowed to be taken. The gear that was available at the time was pretty much aimed more at smaller reef fish. The occasional game fish was more of a luck fish. So I decided to make a bigger, stronger, longer gun as all new guys do. At the time, I had no idea how big I could go or what the parameters were. The standard gun we were using at the time was a small 25 mil or one inch tube, very thin. You can't keep elongating the dimensions without beefing it up, which I did realize in the beginning with these barrels bowing. So I was given a shaft, seven mil shaft, which is bigger than we'd normally been using back in the days. And it was about 1.8 long, quite a long spear. The guy said, you must cut some off. It's too long. So, well, how much do you cut? Oh, I don't know. So I made a long barrel, fitted this long spear to it, went in the water and couldn't hit a thing. It just seemed to shoot all over the place. I eventually worked out it was shooting very low, even though I powered it up. Uh, I eventually did hit a fish close up that got the spear damaged. I'd cut my wishbone notch far too deep and it snapped off. First time I'd ever made a wishbone notch. Rookie mistake, it snapped. In those days, we used to keep the line, the shooting line, ahead of that wishbone notch. So I still maintained contact with the fish, landed the fish. Went back to the little workshop, realized it's now been shortened unintentionally, remade the spear, got back in the water, and it was unbelievably accurate. I couldn't believe that little piece of spear off the shaft made such a difference on the same gun. So I thought, let's be logical. And I took two matchboxes on a glass top table and I supported the spear at the mechanism end and up by the barb. And then I moved the box so that it was in exactly the same position. Sorry, I moved the forward box, which was the variable. In other words, your barrel length. I moved it to a point where it was equal to that of the gun that was now shooting accurately. I then looked down the shaft and I saw a very slight sag both in the middle between the two support points and off the end. I then measured that and I found that the percent of sag off the tip was ever so slightly less than that of the middle. And it got me to thinking that this is obviously the sweet spot. The sag in the middle can affect the way the gun shoots. If you have a gun like in the image, where the shaft is very short to barrel length ratio. Let me go back a step. This is all pre-rail. The rail generation I'll come back to later. This was all pre-rail. So a spear supported just on the ends will have a sag in the middle due to gravity. This caused the spear to shoot high. You look at it in the drawing, it's already in that arc. It'll naturally shoot high. The reverse is true if you have too much hanging out the end. The end will sag more and it'll actually drag the middle up, causing it to arc low, which is exactly what happened in my case. On top of it, your drive stroke of rubber to spear weight, the mass is so much taken out the front that the rubber still has to push, slows it all down. So the sweet spot on a non-rail barrel is basically one third protruding and two thirds in. This ratio, creates the sag in the middle to be slightly more than that on the end. So this is how I got my gun tuned to shoot super straight pre-rail. At the time, there was no social media. The only way we could make contact was one-on-one -on, -one on the beach or the occasional clubs that I would visit. And uh, once guys saw the results of this gun, more and more wanted the same as what I had. And the only way they could get it was by asking me to make it for them. This is how the whole journey started. Once I'd started manufacturing full-time, then I started to look at how we could support the spear in the middle. This is not a new concept. We were probably the first to commercialize it to the degree we did, but a spear with a support was out, I think, pre-war, so long before my time. We just improved on the design. 
we increased the buoyancy by increasing the inside diameter. We worked that out fairly early on. The older ones were very heavy and hard to maneuver, would sink without the spear in. So I realized all we had to do was increase the buoyancy and you'd be surprised how little you needed to increase to make it feel the same. You were also using now much shorter spears so the actual mass the tube was holding up was that much less. So stand by for the rail evolution. Hope you enjoyed that one. Please ask questions. As I mentioned before, before asking a question, please check our playlist. Thank you.